Mrs. Lopez. Mrs. Lopez. You're on mute, Mrs. Lopez. Present. Thank you. And Ms. Gonzalez? Present. Mr. Morales? Present. And Ms. Lentería? Present. Thank you. Tonight, Black Salute will be led by, we have a school in present or? I believe Dr. Dink is going to help us out today. Love it. Yes, I am. Everyone, please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. <laughs> Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Deacon. Now we'll move on to Superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. And uh, today we want to just spend a little bit of time going over some of the highlights for the end of the year and also provide you with an update regarding the Linwood High School facility, as well as some of our facilities that are ongoing projects and give you an update in terms of some of the work that we've been doing with our equity department. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna ask Mr. Carlos Saragosa, Director of Secondary, who's uh, standing in for Dr. Lucas to just go over the HR section at this time. Hi, good evening, Board President, Mr. Hardy, uh, Board members and Dr. Crossway. Thank you, it's my pleasure to uh, just share a few of the highlights here from the uh, Human Resources Department this school year. Um, one of the things I want to highlight is the Adler University residency program that we have. Um, this program creates a pathway for us to bring on teachers that learn the Linwood way. So instead of teachers going through the university and uh, learning through the university, they're actually working directly with our teachers and earning their credential at the same time. So this really allows us to create a pipeline of teachers that are focused in the Linwood way of uh, doing things. The other one is another pipeline that we've uh, started up at the, in the Human Resources Department, which is the Aspiring Administrators Program. So currently we had 20 um, uh, teachers who are aspiring administrators that have been working with us and um, it got cut short due to the school closure. So we're excited about continuing that and adding more teachers to that program so that we have um, great leadership and we train our leaders also in the Linwood way. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as you know, I mean, we, we, our district is still in decline enrollment. So what we've been working on is making sure that our uh, district staffing aligns to the enrollment. So this year, um, we, uh, we avoided layoffs. We didn't have any layoffs. We're not doing any layoffs, but we were able to reduce about uh, 35 uh, certificated positions due through the, uh, mostly through the retirement program that we had. So that helps us uh, in a cost savings, but it also aligns us with what we have in regards to enrollment. And the last one I wanna highlight is the shortening of postings and testing frames. And that's mostly on the classified side. Um, we've really worked on um, lessening that time frame going from um, a long period once we post the, the job and recruitment. Now within two months, we want to make sure that we have a, a list, we, we post, we, we do the recruitment, and then the manager can, um, can hire within a two month time frame. So those are the things. And last thing I just want to say is happy, happy opening day to everybody. Go Dodgers today. Thank you very much, Mr. Saragosa. Continuing on, we have Ed Services, Dr. Dinkins. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. From Business Services. Yes, B comes before E. Uh, good evening. Uh, so I'm going to provide you with some highlights from the business department, which represents uh, seven different departments from fiscal to purchasing, security, technology, maintenance, operation, transportation, risk management. Uh, I might have left one or two of them out, but here's some key things that was a highlight for us in the 1920 school year. We made a successful transition to being self-insured for workers' compensation. We continue to maintain fiscal health. With that comes a positive 
cer a certification on our financials. Um, we, we've we had some great work done with our bond, our bond work. We put in new H VAC systems at Linwood High School last year, and we did some renovations to the middle school field just to highlight two of them. We've also been see receiving, we're, re we're receiving energy savings cost of about one thousand dollars per month and we're hoping to even lower that or increase that as we go in this 2021 school year as well um, we're also improving our operations in child nutrition and always looking to improve our efficiency and our communication with our mot and our facilities thank you mr from let me pause here for any questions or comments All right, let's continue with Ed Services, Dr. Dinkins. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm happy tonight to talk about the year uh, under Ed Services Division. We have Linwood High being named an outstanding school, commendations for Fireball for their excellent international baccalaureate program. Linwood High was also named a pre-AP school our ECE program under the direction of Dr. Bloomfield received um, five tier ratings, some of the highest in the state of California, over 400 college acceptances to historically black colleges and universities and 138 seals of biliteracy, seal of biliteracy awarded this year. Next slide, please. Um, I'm happy to talk about special education and the highlights this year. We are continuing to um, support all of our various staff members under the D Department of Special Education. We have updated our triple A procedures, um, developed and implemented a program of continued service. Our early dispute resolution is, is up and going. Um, our LACO tape back, which was a monumental task, kudos to the special ed department for that. Um, that cost savings in that tape back has been estimated to be approximately three million dollars and we finally completed our special ed parent center located at linwood middle school however right before um, we were able to cut the ribbon and introduce it to the community um, we were forced into school closures by the pandemic but once we are safe to do so we will definitely celebrate that accomplishment next slide and then I'm always proud to talk about the grants. Um, our staff has worked diligently, um, independently, and with some grant writers. Um, our partnerships with NCRF are always uh, monumental for our students and community with over $6.2 million in scholarships awarded to students. Um, independently, Mr. Juan Barroso and the secondary team roll a $900,000 health sciences and STEM grant, as well as the 868,000 strengthening engineering technology and manufacturing grant. We also received CTE incentives grant at $426,000. I'm very proud of our Keck Foundation grant at 225, and our, community, our California Community Foundation grant at $45,000, which um, th that grant is very difficult to get. And I'm proud of that grant for the work uh, done over the summer. Our partnership with Kaiser Permanente for mental health at 45,000, the Honda Foundation, who gave us 25,000 for technology at Rosa Parks and in the Department of Arts and Culture, over $18,000 grant. So great work to the Department and Division of Ed Services. Grad rates, um, at right now, our grad rates are um, not finalized. Uh, we anticipate that we will have increases. As you can see over the almost last 10 years, we have had increases every year in our grad rates. And as soon as those 1920 numbers become official, we will update the board accordingly. Next slide. Same for our four-year cohort graduation rate. Um, I just wanna point out that every subgroup that has been identified here um, has had significant increases over the years. And as, again, when the 1920 data is finalized, we will update the board, but congratulations to all the schools and students who did an outstanding job this year. Next slide, please. Um, as you can see, our FAFSA application rates to four-year colleges and our universities is up. In the last three years, we've 
gone from 60 in the 60s to the 80s and the 70s to the 80s and as we continue to make this a priority with monitoring and support from our outside agencies as well as our employees our counselors our principals and admin we know this number will continue to rise but i am proud of the outstanding work done this year uh, we were off to a great start prior to school closures and we're able to celebrate prior to school closures at 92 percent and 81 percent that's for applications to um, our current high schools. Congratulations, Linwood High and Fireball High School. Next slide, please. Our A through G rates. Um, as you can see, our subgroups are increasing. I know that um, when we look at some of our subgroups, we are concerned that maybe they're stuck, but this five-year data doesn't show the whole picture. From 2012 to 2013, we had subgroups in single digits. And as you can see here, none of our subgroups are in single digits, and they are all making progress. And our A through G rates, our, our, our um, curriculum, our default curriculum for all of our students, um, in our priority for college and career readiness and also success after um, high school graduation. And we will continue to make this a priority and continue to update those numbers as well. Next slide, please. And I'll hand this off to Mr. Fromm for the facilities update. Okay, back again. Good evening again. Um, brief update on our next steps of what's going on at Linwood High School. Um, the next steps we're going to take is what is called shoring up the south, which is a which is a name known for an outdoor ceiling, um, and that. So once those are are secured, we're going to go in and inspect all of them throughout the whole campus. Um, one of the main things they're going to look for in there and go in and do what is called a pull test to check for stability for on screws and joints um, to see if they pass that. So those those are those are the next three three steps that we're going to be taking at Linwood High. Some um, projects that are currently in construction through our bond work. We have uh, updated restrooms, Abbott Elementary, which is uh, almost complete. Um, we're in the process of completing playground structures at seven el uh, seven elementary sites: Abbott, Mark Twain, Rosa Park, Marshall, Will Rogers, Ro uh, Roosevelt, and. Washington Elementary. We also are finishing up installation of a new gas line at Linwood Middle School. And we have fire alarm projects at Linwood Middle School, Rosa Parks, Will Rogers, Mark Twain, and Lindbergh. And we're in the process of completing secured entrances at Washington Elementary, Wilson, and Lincoln. Thank you very much, Mr. Fromm and Dr. Dinkins. As you can see, we've been really busy, especially with our facilities. And again, although we've made a lot of progress, we're not finished. There's still a lot of work ahead of us. But this is our, these are just some of the highlights that we want to share with you. Are there any questions or comments regarding what you just heard right now before we continue? Well, I have a comment and a recommendation, uh, especially in Linwood High School. We need to make sure 100 percent if it is not more that the school is safe when the students come back. And I know that um, administration engineers and all the consultants are working very hard, but we need to make sure that the school is safe, that that's the main thing and the first uh, priority that we need to have as a school district. Um, I know that the other projects in construction they're working very well, but Linwood High has to be safe. And that's what I know that all of you are working on that, but uh, it's a double, double recommendation that uh, we need to, to check every time that we go to the Linwood High with the engineers. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. And I do want to point out that on tonight's agenda, we have, on tonight's board meeting, we have two different items related to this project. And so, as Mr. Fromm mentioned, one of the items is to shore up to make sure that all the ceilings are safe and that there isn't any additional danger. And then secondly, we're hiring, we're recommending the hiring of an independent structural engineer to make sure that the facility is safe and that there are no other issues there. And we will make sure that we provide the report to all the board as well as the public regarding the findings and any possible recommendations as well. Thank you. I have, I have a quick question. 
when do we foresee um, sending out a community update on what's what we're doing with uh, the high school in terms of the safety precautions and all that we're all that we're discussing today? How are we going to be able to share that with the community in a bigger mass than a board meeting? Yes, so it's actually going to happen tomorrow, Mrs. Renteria. And so the letter will go out, email will go out to the staff, and then Linwood High School uh, principal, Ana Gonzalez, is working with Mr. Fromm with our construction management firm to set up a town hall meeting as well. Thank you for that. All right, and then I uh, want to continue, just provide you with an update in terms of some of the work that we've been doing. Again, this is ongoing work. Some of these things have been happening for multiple years. And as you know, we've had our equity department now for five years, going on five years. So four years going on five years. And our principles of equity, access, and justice have now been in place with us for seven years. So um, Dr. Dinkins will be joined by Dr. Sanko to provide you with a brief overview of some of the work that we've been um, working on. Thank you, Board President. I mean, thank you, Dr. Crossway. <laughs> um, next slide, please. Um, I'm proud to present with Dr. Patricia Sanko, who has been um, Director of Equity and now Equity Access and Instructional Services since 2016. Here is our statement and what we believe that equity means here in Linwood Unified. I will not read the whole statement, but I want to highlight the salient points of this statement. And that is what equity means to us, providing unfettered, differentiated support and access to all students. Next slide, please. So our equity plan is a three-year plan with five goals. Those goals include creating an understanding of equity, tolerance, and cultural competence throughout the organization, creating structures that provide opportunities to learn about cultural groups, providing targeted supports to traditionally underserved students, including but not limited to our African-American English learner, foster youth, homeless students, and those students who identify as LGBTQ. Goal four, providing targeted supports to parents of traditionally underserved students, including but not limited to those aforementioned groups. And goal five, using data to define, establish, and implement culturally proficient practices throughout our organization. Next slide, please. So to further delineate goal one, which is creating an understanding of equity, tolerance, and cultural competence throughout the organization. Here are some of the tenants. Uh, professional development is a myriad of offerings. I want to um, highlight race and culture, unconscious bias and the many faces of biases, culturally responsive teaching methods, equitable grading practices, equity versus equality, and strat um, raising resilient leaders. Next slide, please. And so in goal two, um, this is the structures that provide students and staff with opportunities to learn about various cultural groups, including exposure to a multicultural curriculum, including character education, fostering community relationships and providing extended learning opportunities for staff. Um, we have done our work through our, even though ethnic studies is currently being talked about, we have always done that work in alignment to the current CDE guidelines. And we are providing meaningful cultural learning trips, as well as ongoing and consistent support through mentoring and tutoring and for college readiness and development for staff and students. And now we'll hand it off to Dr. Sanko, who will follow up on the other goals. Thank you, Board President Hardy, Board Member Superintendent Crossway, Cabinet, and my fabulous boss, Dr. Dinkins. Goal three provides targeted supports for our traditionally underserved students, not underserved in Linwood, however. And those students are African-American students, English learner students, foster youth, homeless, Asian Pacific American, and students who identify as LGBTQ+. For our African-American student group, we have provided junior senior action plans, student conferences to support graduate after graduation education, male and female leadership conferences, team summits, cultural experiences, not only for the students, but also for their families, home visits, data reflection sessions, 
one-on-one -on -one counseling, rites of passage, cultural experience, on-campus mentors and tutors who assist students daily and who continue to assist students after uh, we went virtually in a virtual format. And then of course, our $3.1 million Honda pipeline for young men of color and our leadership academies that take place at every um, elementary and, and middle school site. For our English learner students, We've done great work in creating and planning a matrix for our district program, reviewed and revamped the reclassification criteria and made sure that that criteria was communicated to all stakeholders, reviewed the ELD standards and frameworks, provided professional development for teachers, made sure that our criteria aligned with the state for the seal of biliteracy. And they also participated with leadership academies in the Honda pipeline and ELD learning walks. Next slide, please. For our LGBTQ plus students, we've updated our board policies and we have gay straight alliances with club advisors at our high schools, both high schools. And that established a very safe cultural space for inclusion. They're very proud of their shirts, their materials, their learning trips, guest speakers, and then from a theoretical standpoint, we've provided professional development for admin and counselors as to how to best support this student group, academic progress monitoring, and then resources using the Great Strait Alliance framework. Our Asian Pacific Islander, Asian Pacific American students have also benefited from academic progress monitoring, the family fun days, cultural uh, uh, experience trips, resources to support the students and parents from at firm, the Asian Pacific Islander Family Support Network, as well as Dr. Victor Thompson with um, Los Angeles County Office of Education. Our equity department has a point person for each one of these targeted groups. And the point person for our Asian Pacific Islander group is Mrs. Lenora Archie. Next slide, please. Goal four talks about the need to make sure that our parents are given the resources and supports they need as equal partners in their children's education. We've created a seven point plan for them, including family fun days, advocacy and empowerment, homeschool connection resources that have been placed on our websites, that have also been emailed out to parents to continue that support in our distance learning format, multiple sources of communication, workshops and conferences, and then gathering parent input in both a quantitative and qualitative manner via surveys and then in-person um, gathering of their input. Next slide. We believe in data. Data is powerful and it's a powerful tool that we use to identify academic achievement gaps and areas that need additional uh, resources from the equity department. The data sources that we use are SBAC, reclassification rates, graduation rates, AP entry, course completion, passage rates, D and F rates, discipline data, including suspension and expulsion, rates of entry into special education, LCAP parent and youth true survey data as well. This data has also been shared in other formats as we've been um, received commendations and asked to share our experiences with AXA, CABE, CASA, LACO, Riverside County Office of Education and our successful outcomes were recently published in the CASA PLN white paper for the California Department of Education, California Collaborative for Educational Excellence. Next slide. As we talk about our next steps, we also keep in mind that there are positive outcomes that we have gained in the last four years. When outlining these next steps, we are very intentional about looking at our graduation rates across the spectrum. According to the California dashboard, the African-American graduation rate is 93.4%. In 
in comparison with the state of California, which is 78%. English learners, 83.8% for Linwood. The state, 72%. Homeless foster youth students, 88.1% for Linwood, and yet 77% for the state. And in terms of our students with disabilities, 89.2% for Linwood, but yet 70% for the state. So we want to be intentional about looking at those measures so that we can plan clear uh, next steps. The next steps for our department are divided into four quadrants, students, staff, parents, and program monitoring. For our students, we're going to continue our at student equity forums, our student equity affinity groups, and then to assist our, our school sites in monitoring and making sure students are engaged in distance learning, calling them up uh, and reminding them about class times. For staff, we are planning a virtual equity institute. Last year, we hosted over 150 teachers in-house for a two-day two equity institute over the summer. This year, it will be virtual and we will be promoting and uh, get gaining the support of more equity warriors in Linwood. And then the establishment of LUSD site equity warrior teams who will then go and present a three-part equity series at every school site in our district. Under parents, we will have virtual parent forums as well as continue the homeschool connection resources. And from a policy standpoint, program monitoring standpoint, looking at our grading policy, curriculum evaluation and equity plan revision. Uh, we've gone through our three years of the equity plan and next year is our year to work on revision. Next slide, please. Communication, outreach and policy alignment are our three core pillars for our equity work. Making sure that we share the plan, equity resources, as well as updates, outreach, we have a very robust equity professional development catalog that our administrators and instructional leads use to call us up. They can choose a workshop that is tailor-made for their um, school site, parent groups, and then on-campus site support. Policy alignment. In order for there to continue the positive systemic change in Linwood, we have made sure that we have revised our board policies on inclusion, discrimination, grading, suicide, immigration, categorical funding, and sexual harassment. Next slide, please. And so I will leave you with our equity warriors mantra that we say at the end of all of our equity meetings, I wrote it for the team, but we are equity warriors. We facilitate structural changes in schools, systems that traditionally underserve and marginalize students the greatest gift we give is to create environments where every student can thrive. We are game changers, lifesavers, motivators, teachers, and lifelong learners. Our work is challenging, but the stakes are great. We will not fail, for we know it is our life's calling to liberate students from all constraints that hold them back. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to serve me with students. Thank you, Dr. Sanko and Dr. Dinkins. And uh, I want to just commend all of our staff. We are really here to repurpose public education, to lead by example, and to really serve our students and, and families here in the community. So with that, President Hardy, are there any questions or comments? I believe you're on mute, Mrs. Lopez. I have a um, request for Ms. Patricia Branshaw. Yes. So um, on her equity plan, I would like to see included the special ed the students in writing because I noticed that it's not in writing. It's just all groups, but the special ed. So I would like to see it included too because if it is equity, everybody needs to be included. All population of our students. That's Thank you. Time. Thank you, Mrs. Lopez. I have a question for Dr. Sanko. I know this might 
maybe a bit of a loaded question, um, but I know there was some reform and now you have a, even in a bigger department. And I'm excited about it because I feel like now we have an opportunity to further um, collaborate with different teams. And I just wanted to hear from you, how do you, you feel we can better collaborate within our different teams, like student services and the equity and instruction and like the foster programs that we have? Um, because I feel that that's a, um, an area that we always wanna improve and make sure that we're doing the best for our students. So great, I can respond both um, to Mrs. Lopez as well as you in the same uh, vein. Our department um, is, we, we consider ourselves an octopus. We cross pollinate with the other departments and we meet regularly with our team members from student services, Dr. Martinez, Kevin Gavan, Tam Nguyen, and we provide supports to them. As well, because special ed is that, it's a specialized field and every kid has their IEP. What we do is we send our equity coordinators out to participate in IEP. And then we have conversations director to director and coordinator to coordinator with members of the special education department. Dr. Dinkins has been um, very mindful in making sure that all of our directors meetings include a roundhouse and a round table where we go around and we share what projects we're working on and how we can support one another. So, um, you know, I've, I've been meeting with student services for a while. I, I joked with Dr. Um, Dawson a long time ago, and I said, you know, we're not trying to be the Thanksgiving dinner. You're the turkey, we're the gravy. So we just want to augment all of the things that, that each department is doing. So those interdepartment meetings have been taking place for the last three years. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that you are not um, you are not actually um, taking in account the students. My request is put it in writing in your equity plan because I I noticed that it's missing. So yes, I don't yes. want misconception from community, especially that the special education that is very sensitive to the parents. So if we are talking about equity, uh, I think that we are missing that particular. Um, population and i that's a strong request that needs to be included in the plan too uh, i know that it's a special education different money different everything but at the end of the day it's our students and at the end of the day everybody is in the equity should be in the equity plan so thank you Thank you, Ms. Lopez, and we will be sure to update and include that as we move forward with the revision of our three-year plan, which expires this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a quick question about our revision. Um, I know that you, we, we shared that next year is the three-year term expires, so we're revising the plan. What is the plan for that revision to happen? I know that with everything happening, it's probably going to have to be virtual, but what are we already planning to do to ensure that we have um, enough stakeholders involved? Because I think that that's something that I, I've also strongly encouraged for some time now. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of the same volunteers and I love those that are always willing to do extra, but it's always the same voices. So what are we going to do as we are able to, this is a new opportunity to refresh what we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a, may I just, uh, before oh. you continue, Dr. Seiko, <laughs> You know, Dr. Sagan is going to give you a lot of the details, but it's something that she and her department have already been working on. And it's just been incredible to see the new faces that have joined our collaborative efforts to reflect on what we're doing and also to provide new input. So Dr. Sankel, take it away. <laughs> so uh, two, two, two points I want to make. One is really looking at the equity site teams and having um, volunteers from every school site become their own equity warriors team. So that's something different. But in addition to that, what we did the first time, we did have a lot of people on the committee um, that, that became those equity stakeholders. Um, and it included representatives from every school site, parent representatives from each of our core parent stakeholder groups, students, 
st other staff members for classified and certificated because equity has to be about everyone. And I agree totally with what Mrs. Lopez is saying. We are going to try to be as inclusive of every voice as humanly possible. After those stakeholders are gathered, they go through a process of a professional development because we want to make sure when we're talking about our equity plan that we are all on the same page and that we have a uniform mindset about what we're trying to accomplish. Not individual interest, but what we're trying to accomplish holistically for our district. So last time that process took place in over about eight meetings and we are planning to uh, go through the same process but with an addition of having our site equity warriors. Thank you, Thank Dr. You Cinco. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? And President Hardy, that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Crossway, and thank you to um, Cabinet and staff for those thoughtful and insightful um, presentations. I look forward to uh, seeing the process of including community in the revision of the equity plan. So thanks again. Uh, so now we'll move on to our board report, starting with uh, Mr. Morales. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Uh, just wanted to uh, talk about a couple of things, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was the FASCO applications. And I'm so glad that we had so many, such a high percentage of our students uh, apply for the FASCO because there's been studies that there's a direct correlation with that and how many of our students actually attend college. And I definitely want to, um, you know, highlight our counselors because I heard that they were very, uh, they were, they were actually you know, going after our students to make sure that they filled out those applications. And I also know, though, that it was in part because Ms. Renteria, you know, brought the issue to staff's attention. And I think that um, if there's one thing we're in this for is for is to improve the education of our students and make sure that they're successful. And as many of them as want to attend college do attend college. And I think that that was um, something that was remarkable because the percentage of students was extremely high and we were not there back in December. So I think that everyone did a wonderful job. And I just want to echo what's going on in, you know, in life and everyone be careful, stay home. Uh, California recorded its highest numbers of COVID cases yesterday with over 12,000. And as much as, you know, people are trying to stay safe, you know, they're not. So stay as home as much as possible. Uh, you know, social distancing is important, wear masks. And that hopefully we can get back to normal and we can get our kids back in school, which is where they belong. And I know that the board feels that way, but their safety is a priority. And we are going to make sure that our kids are safe and that they're not an experiment and that we send them to school when we know things are safe. And lastly, regarding Linwood High School, um, we've met a couple of times on a facilities uh, committee that we have where there's two board members, which is myself and Ms. Renteria. And we've also had um, a, a, a closed session uh, item on a retreat. So I want the community to know that we're on top of the issue and we're gonna make sure that our schools are as safe as we can be. And we're gonna hold anybody or anything responsible if anyone needs to be held responsible, but we're gonna make sure that our kids are safe before we put them back in any buildings. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hardy. Thank you, Mr. Morales. Is Ms. Renteria still with us? Okay, go for it. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I do want to first off commend our staff for uh, the presentation they just gave. I, I am a big believer and I know that sometimes I can be a little harsh because I always want to just keep going and I'm always looking at what's next and what can we do better and what can we improve and how can we get better. But I think tonight is a great, it's a great time to reflect on just the work that that all of you have been able to accomplish despite the circumstances. This was a really challenging year um, across the board. And I know that uh, I'll tell you as a school leader myself, it was by far the hardest, uh, the hardest, most difficult year of my life to lead. Uh, so I can only imagine just the work you've all been going through and the stress. So I commend your work. I, I applaud you for just being able to go above and beyond. 
And I am so grateful that we have so many equity warriors in the right positions. I, I do think that uh, the work that is happening is a reflection of the kind of leadership that we currently have across the board at our at the district level. So thank you all so much for that work. I, I also want to um, reiterate what Mr. Morales said. Those FAFSA rates are huge. I know that five years ago, um, I was biasedly always talking about them because I was a college counselor and it used to just, that was one of the things that could not let me sleep that we were under the 40% rate and just seeing it increase so drastically over the last couple of years but also knowing how intentional we've been about improving those rates with college counselors and having that partnership with USC and having college and career techs in the college center, all of those different um, moves have been integral to the progress that we've made. So I, I'm just super proud and, and it's always nice to see like, yes, that move was the right move. Uh, so I'm excited to continue to see that growth. I still dream of the day we're at hundred percent and I know we're gonna get there. Uh, but it's always just nice to be able to to reflect and think about how far we've come. Um, I also want to make sure that I I share with some of my own colleagues because I do consider um, all of the the educators in Linwood my colleagues because I I am on the same boat with you. I also have the same worries about going back to school, and I know that we were one of the first districts to make it very clear that we were not going to open if we felt it was not safe. And just knowing that the state is, that the governor was able to now make it so that all um, districts could do the same and realize that this wasn't about um, egos, it's about student safety, it's about staff safety, it's about family safety. And I know that a lot of you have felt that sense of relief at knowing that you have people looking out for you and know that we're all looking out for you. Um, I know that my colleagues, uh, Ms. Lopez is also an educator, so she knows just the stress that it's been to know that, are we gonna go back to school? What is it gonna look like? Um, and, and just know that we are, we're here for you, whatever you need, please. Uh, to our teachers, be, um, be open to asking for help. Talk to your principals, ask them for what you need. And if the principals, if you don't have what you need, please ask the directors and ask your supervisors to help you. Because I know what it's like to be alone and one of my goals this year is how do we better support you? What do we need to do to ensure that we're not just going to make it through distance learning, but we make the best of distance learning because our students deserve a quality experience. You all deserve a quality a work experience. So I just want to make sure that you know that we're here for you. We're here to support you and we don't have all the answers. And a lot of you are more experts than we are. So if you have ideas, reach out to us. You have our emails. If you don't have our emails, reach out to the district. They will give it to you. It is public information, but I want to make sure that you are able to uh, share those ideas with us because we're always looking to see what can we do better to support you to ensure that at the end of the day, our students receive what they deserve, which is a quality education. Uh, but thank you so much for, uh, I know many of you, I've seen a lot of Linwood educators that keep posting on social media. They're doing webinars on training themselves on their own time to figure out how to do Bitmoji classrooms how to do more interactive, engaging um, uh, just sessions. And that in itself shows your commitment and your dedication to ensuring you are the best teacher you can be. But in, in addition to all of that, ask for help because that's our job. Our job is to ensure we give you whatever you need so that you can do a good job. Um, and then just uh, to, to close off, uh, as Mr. Morales said, we he and I are both part of a, a committee that allows us to um, have a little bit more insight into all the facility issues ar across the district. And I know that as a board, we have discussed um, our full commitment to ensuring that not only is Linwood High School, um, not only do we take every precaution necessary so that Linwood High School is a safe environment for all of our students and staff, but in general for all of our schools. That is one of the big um, topics that we discussed at our last retreat this Sunday. It's it's the understanding that we're all, that is our biggest commitment. You all as families and parents, um, you let us borrow your little ones on a daily basis. And these are your babies, regardless of their high school students, these are your babies. And it's our job to make sure they're safe. So please know that we're doing uh, what we need to do to ensure that we follow through on everything that we have to follow through and make whoever is responsible for uh, what's happened uh, and responsible for it 
and ensure that we take the right measures from here on on. Um, please be patient with us. I know that as Dr. Cross, we said earlier, we're going to be sharing more communication. And I know that that's always something that's requested. Like we want to know more. We want to know what's happening. And I know that these meetings are not always the most user friendly. I can understand that. Uh, so I, I do know that we're also working on ensuring that we can communicate better so that there's more transparent communication across the board. Uh, but thank you so much and have a, a great uh, rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Um, we'll move on to Ms. Gonzalez. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope everyone ha is having a pleasant evening. Um, just want to thank our directors and our cabinet for the presentation and highlighted you know the amazing work that we're doing and also was closely aligned to a lot of the conversations that we had um, at our board retreat this um, last Sunday um, and something that we're as a board um, discussed that I, I loved hearing Dr. Sanko talk is it's all about data and we really wanted to emphasize and I wanted to highlight it today that th yes that is the way that we need to approach it and continue um, in in our approach to even have better strides and higher strides for our students I know we've done amazing things um, since I've been on the board since in, in 2011 I think um, but I think to even elevate what we're doing and get be better at what we're doing we need to break down like even the a through g data that we saw by additional subgroups so um and many of those subgroups i know dr sanko talked about the lgbtq um the gender students identify our foster youth our homeless youth by doing that we're looking at critical data to make sure we're being accountable for all our students um and i think um, um Internally, I know we're doing a great job about communicating with each other, but I think we also want to see that at the board level. So I just wanted to continue um, to emphasize that because we just want to make sure whatever educational experience we're giving to our students is the best and it's tailored to them. So not only are they um, doing great and being successful at school, they can also be successful in life. Um, so i looking forward um, to seeing additional information of, in regards to our outcomes for all our students. And I think we have the perfect team to do that. Um, so um, I just wanna thank you for that. And just echoing really quickly, some of the comments about communication, especially in the environment we're in now, and the fact that our schools will continue to be doing distance learning. I think it's extra critical for us to make sure we're communicating about everything. I know regardless of the pandemic, um, all school districts are facing financial uncertainty. Um, and that's also a conversation that we wanna have with the community and be um, transparent with the community, our students, our parents. Um, so that we continue to have those conversations, see how we can get them involved um, and seeing like all the different ways that we can do it, do this. So I just wanna emphasize the importance of our district communicating with the community on our budget, our facilities, on where our district is at with, um, you know, the distance learning, um, because we wanna keep that community co connection. Um, and we know that people feel disconnected right now. Um, and I really don't have any more comments. So with that, I conclude my report, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Ms. Lopez. Uh, good afternoon, Linwood community, board members, superintendent, and everybody. Um, for me, it's just a matter of uh, being grateful. We are alive after being in this pandemic that everybody's most are getting sick or scared. I think that we are thankful to God because we are fine. Um, my thing always has been uh, being safety. Right now, I want to let the community know that we are working very hard along with the superintendent, administrators, uh, Linwood High principals to make sure that the school is ready for the comeback of a student whenever it's safe to come back. Secondly, we are doing the best we can to get all the devices to the students for the long distance learning. And also one of the situations that we are talking about, especially we spend Sunday in a board meeting, um, 
seeing how we can facilitate more Wi-Fi internet to the community. And it's something that uh, the school district is going to look into that and see who actually need it. And, and there is a plan already. And this, this is information only. Uh, principals, we already spoke about the principals. We need to give the support to all the principals so the principals feel knowledgeable about what they are doing, the training that we are doing as a school district is in benefit of the students. Any principal needs to embrace the students, needs to embrace the employees, needs to embrace the parents, and also the communication from the principal is something that we, the whole board, are actually supporting a lot, that we need to have principals that represent our community in communication. And uh, the only thing that I want to say is thank you to administrators because this is a very difficult time. It's a new situation. Everything, all the classes now are going to be online. And it's a challenge. The training that we need to give to the teachers, the training that we need to uh, give to the parents and the kids, we need to be upfront with that. So the communication is going to come from that office of the superintendent or the teachers. When is when are the trainings? When the classes are going to start and what the classes your kids are going to have. So thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Thank you, Mrs. Lopez. And for me, I'll be very brief because I think my colleagues uh, covered it all. Um, very thorough report, some of our staff and colleagues. I just want to, again, echo our gratitude for the work that um, everyone in the district has been doing during this pandemic. Um, it's, it's all new to us, regardless of how long you've been in education. Um, no one has had to um, educate during the pandemic in, until when we got to, to the school year. And a lot of the things we had planned um, had to sort of be put on hold or altogether all canceled um, for the fact that we had to um, prioritize safety um, above our being in person during, for, during education. So um, the same way we're approaching keeping our kids and families safe during the pandemic is the same way we're approaching um, the situation at Linwood High School with the facilities. Um, I was a student there myself. Um, so I'm very much uh, concerned about what happened, but more so concerned that we um, do the right thing and having the proper inspections in place so that we ensure when we do return to campus that it is safe for everyone who may uh, enter there. Um, and just lastly, I'm just looking forward to um, reimagining um, our priorities as a board. We had a very good discussion on Sunday at our board retreat um, to uh, look over the year uh, prior and look into the next year and to start to reimagine um, and refine what education entails in Linwood. So I'm looking forward to the bold and courageous leadership of our, our cabinets, our site admin, and that we um, approach this moment um, that, you know, we have a lot of momentum here to do what's right and to really, really in ensure and solidify equity in all of our schools, um, but more so to move our community towards the beloved community that we always talk about and know that Linwood can be. Um, so I'm just I'm looking forward to this new phase in this new era um, in, in Linwood um, and looking forward to uh, continuing to work with um, our excellent uh, teams here and excellent staff here to make sure that we uh, provide an excellent education uh, for our, our Linwood community. Um, and that is, um, um, you know, uh, fortified by resources and, and access and opportunities uh, to make sure that we are, are thriving here and not just surviving. Also, I do, I still want to shout out um, Audrey Casas. I know um, her um, group in the Mastering Hope Initiative has a giveaway on Saturday, I think. Um, I, I think they're still looking for volunteers, if I'm not mistaken. So if you have time to, to stop by and, and help with the, the um, this distribution, please do so. Um, it's always a great thing when we, when we take care of our community. Um, because uh, doing so is our responsibility um, as Linwood natives, uh, but more so we have responsibility to humanity that if you can reduce the harm someone is facing, that, that you do so. So there's many families that we know are uh, facing a lot of instability now with uh, seemingly stay-at-home orders coming back around with the spikes that we've seen in our cases. Um, so I think that's important that we all do our part to support, that we stay home, that we wear a mask, that we listen to the science about this, this pandemic, but more so that we do our part um, to be good neighbors and helping each other. So 
if you have a have time, please reach out to Audrey and Mastering Hope and see how you can be supportive of their effort. But again, the best thing that we all can do is stay home and wear a mask and listen to the data, the scientists and the doctors uh, on this issue and not make it a, a political issue. Um, it is your right to wear a mask or not, but it's, it's more so our right to ensure that we all have, um, you know, a, a happy and free life and that, that we're all healthy and safe. And I know I personally don't want to take the virus home to my mom who's diabetic or my daughter um, who has asthma like I do. Uh, I think that's what was at stake is looking um, beyond ourselves personally, but how we can impact someone else's life uh, negatively. Um, with that, um, that completes my report. I will move on to um, governing board. Um, there's no uh, resolutions or proclamations this evening. Um, is there any public comment? No, President Hardy, none tonight. No public comment. Uh, there's no public hearing, so we'll move on to um, action item. We have item 14A1 through 14 C1. Uh, if there is no objection, we can take all the action items together. Um, I had a question. I know when item is an appointment. Mm -hmm. Does that one have to That's be separated? Right. Yes, that'll have to be separate. My, my, my apologies for that. I totally missed that one. And I think that's 14B2. Yes. So what we'll clarification, it's through 14C8, right? Yes. And we'll we'll do 14 uh, B2, the, the appointment uh, separately. Is there a motion to approve the action items with item 14 B2 withheld for separate vote? So moved. I'm second. So moved and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Yes. Ms. Renteria? Yes, sorry. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Now moving on to item 14.B2, appointment of board representative to the Los Angeles County School Trustees Association from July 1, 2020 through June 20, June 30th, uh, 2021. So move. Is there a second? Do we need to um, could make it whoever, who's the current? Okay. Yeah, can okay. I nominate the current appointee? Yeah, I don't know who it is. Sorry. I, I forget to look there's an objection to that the person who is the current nominee. I think it's Alfonso. I'll do it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> we have a nomination for uh, Mr. Morales for the board representative to the Los Angeles County School. I'll second that. So, <laughs> second it. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mrs. Lopez. Yes. Ms. Gonzalez. Yes. Mr. Morales. Yes. Ms. Renteria. Yes. Thank you. Now moving on to consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mrs. Lopez. Yes. Ms. Gonzalez. Yes. Mr. Morales. Yes. And Ms. Renteria. Yes. Thank you. The item passes five to zero. Now moving on to item number 16, discussion items. Um, uh, 16A request approval of resolution 20-21 slash the approved grading resolution for the Linwood Unified School District. So move. Second. Is this, is this for, for action or for, for discussion? Yeah, this is just a discussion item. We met with uh, LTA this week and we shared with them that we have a resolution up for discussion that we want to collaborate with them to make sure that we revisit our grading practices to ensure that we have equitable grading practices based on research so that we don't have disproportionate number of Ds and Fs for some of our students and it's an opportunity for us to collaborate with LTA and come back to you hopefully by our meeting in August, if not by September, with some clear parameters and guidelines for all of our teachers across our district. 
Um, so, and who else is going to be, so who's going to be part of this discussion? Sorry, I might have missed that. Yeah, this is a conversation that we've been having ongoing now with um, members from LTA for the last four years. We've also had parents and students involved in these conversations. And we've gotten to a point where we have some good parameters and some good understanding. But what we really need is we really need to finalize some recommendations, for example, eliminating the zero. Uh, we've had Mrs. Lopez in the in the past ask us to do some research on equitable grading practices, and one of those things that was brought forth to us is, can we research eliminating the D? Can we eliminate research, um, you know, revisiting the grading scale that has a zero to ten? Because when a student gets anything lower than a five, you're putting that student in a deficit, and it's very difficult for them to get out of that hole. And then also looking at what does the research say about what grades should be aligned, ass uh, allotted to a test, quiz, homework, et cetera, and making sure that students are not penalized when they're working in groups or when they don't have the resources or materials because they should not be penalized for not having something. That's great. I think it's a, a good chance to start to address um, implicit bias in grading. So I hope that's part of the conversation and ensuring that um, the mechanisms are in place to ensure that grading is equitable and that there is no no biases so when the grades are, are assigned to students. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And that's it. it comes the internet, it comes the Wi-Fi, it comes, you know, the materials that they need actually to be attending the Zoom meetings, online courses. So uh, we need to do our part and then we can actually start grading. And uh, this discussion item, I think that we need to know more about it. And then we um, we will like to have more information about them. Absolutely, we'll provide you with some additional information in terms of the presentations and the conversations and the agreements that we have thus far with the committee. Yeah, and I think it's also important to talk about the situations where we've been in the past where students have been graded unfairly and really get, why are we doing that and how is that happening? So anecdotal stories from students, I think are also important to have. I know from just the, the end of this year and the end of last year, we always get those students reaching out to us saying that they tried their best, but something seemed, there was some disconnect um, and it, it shouldn't be that way. Yes, correct. Yeah, and given the circumstances with the distance learning continuing, at least for the uh, large part of this semester, is really making sure that if a student doesn't have internet access, that they don't have the devices or the other tools, we cannot penalize them. And that's something that I know that our teachers are very empathetic about, and we need to make sure that we put that clearly in writing for everyone because we shouldn't, a student should not be penalized because, again, income level or any other factors. We need to support all of our students. And when we talk about equity, how do we put that in practice and actually implement it so that, again, our students know that they really are supported and valued here in our district. And we need to make very, you know, make sure that the students who are the students who do not have the internet services and then find a way to provide them with that. Yes, and we'll be uh, providing you with an update at the next board meeting. So just for right now, a quick update. We will be distributing an additional laptop device to our teachers starting next week so that they have two devices at home to facilitate the distance learning. Our tech department under the direction of uh, Mr. Fromm and Jamal Boyce have purchased 3,000 hotspots that they will be distributing to the identified families that we know already that have that need. And so then we'll be also making additional adjustments and providing the continued professional development for not only our teachers, but also our administrators and also the, our classified employees. Thank you very much. I really like that. Thank you. Sir. Is there is no discussion further? Oh, it was uh, information only. So, yes. Thank you for that. So now we'll move on to item um, number seventeen: report out of closed session. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, with reference to the agenda, um, let me just double check very quickly to make sure I've got the right number. 
agenda number six, uh, item 6A1, with five to zero votes, the board approved a list of six medical professionals for, for potential service on a panel as stated in Education Code Section 44942, Subdivision I. Item 6A2, with four to one votes, Ms. Renteria Ney, the board appointed Dr. Dion Gardner to the position of Principal Cesar Chavez Middle School. Item 6B, this item was not considered by the board and that concludes the readout from closed session. Thank you so much. And now we'll move on to item number 18, uh, adjournment. Uh, and if there is no objection, I would like to adjourn this meeting at 7.08 PM in honor of Congresswoman, um, Congressman uh, John Lewis. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.